So going back to capacitors in various circuits, there's a whole class of problems similar to this one where we have a set of capacitor, we connect a certain way, we charge it fully, and then we somehow disconnect and rearrange them, and then we let it approach another equilibrium again. They seem a little artificial, I guess, but it really gets you to demonstrate your understanding of how voltages work in different connections and how you carry the charge using different capacitor and then that charges distributes itself accordingly to make everything fit. So here we have our circuit with 36 volts fully charged. We have C1 equal 8.4 microfarad, C2 is equal to 8.4 microfarad, and C3, the one of interest, is only 4.2 microfarads. First, you notice that all these are in series. So in series, we know that the charge of all of them must be exactly the same because the current through all of them is exactly the same. And because they're in series, we can reduce that bunch into a single series resistor with the same charge. So because in the series, 1 over Cs is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, subbing in the number, taking the reciprocal, we get 2.1 microfarads. So then the charge then, which is the same as the charge on each of the individual capacitor in the series, is given by C times V, where C is Cs, and V is the overall voltage because it's fully charged. If you look at the loop rule here, you gain 36 and you must drop another 36. So you take the 2.1 microfarad, multiply by 36 volts, we'll end up with 75.6 microfarads, which is equal to our Q3. So that answers our part A. And then for part B, somehow we disconnect the potential difference without letting them discharge. So whatever Q was on here before, we destroy all those, but the charges, which is what we figure out from part A, they're sticking around because the charges are unable to flow anywhere. There's no circuits. And then you cut all these out as well, and then you rearrange them and reconnect them in parallel, like that. Initially, because they only just got connected together, the charges haven't had time to flow yet, so those charges will stay the way they are. But, after a long time, or since there's no resistance, actually after a very short time, the charges will distribute themselves, and because you're in parallel, what you get is you get that all the voltages in equilibrium must be the same. But, the total charge on these three plates, so if you look at just this side, this side is totally unconnected to the other side, so then none of the charges actually escape through this continuous piece of metal that I've circled here. So somehow between the three plates, you have three Q. Q being whatever you have from part A. Of course they will be redistributed, and our job here is to find out what is that V. So to do this, all we really need to do is to reduce this parallel bit into a single capacitor. So because we're in parallel, we simply add the three capacitance, which is 8.4 plus 8.4 plus 4.2 microfarads giving a total of 21 microfarads. And to find my voltage, I take the total charge, because I'm combining all three of them. And this here is again that much, and we get 10.8 volts. So it's not as simple as 36 divided by 3. You do have to track how much charge is on each of those capacitor at the time you disconnect them, and then when you reconnect them, work out how the charges will redistribute itself through 
the various parts and then you can work out the actual voltage.